and welcome back. Remember to call if you want to join the program, 888-589-8840. My name is Brian Fisher. The program is Focal Point. Uh, the network is AFR Talk, the American Family Radio Talk Network. Glad to have you jump in on the conversation, 888-589-8840. And um, if we can, Emily, can we grab clip number 14, have that ready to go, the Bill Maher clip, clip 14, Triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. I want to give the information on Jan Markell one more time, so you can get more information about her and her ministry if you would like. Her website is olive tree views dot org. Olive tree, like an olive tree, one word. Olive tree views plural dot org. And her program, Understanding the Times. It airs on the weekends on AFR Talk at noon, or rather 1 o'clock on Saturday. This is Central Time. 1 p.m. Central Time on Saturday and noon on Sunday. You can catch her program, Understanding uh, the Times. Now, I got to, uh, uh, before we go to the phones, I want to play this one soundbite from Bill Maher because I think what he says here is actually true. And that's not a good thing for a country because every country, asked every modern country, is now a quasi-socialist country. That's not a dirty word. But in America, when you say socialist, you know, most people they don't know what it means. They just they know it's something super bad, like pedophilia or atheism or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just something we can't. Meanwhile, they do nothing but take money from the government. They're such hypocrites. They hate socialism. Okay, I... Uh... They hate um, socialism, he says, but they live on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, farm subsidies, unemployment benefits, all this money, but they hate socialism, he uh, went on to say. You know, and it's interesting to me because that's what you run into. You know, I found this in discussions with people that, that share my worldview. And I will be talking about some kind of government program that I think is an absolute total waste of space and waste of money and a waste of energy, a waste of taxpayer dollars. But if they have a family member that has benefited from that program, then they defend it. They say, oh, no, we got to keep that one. Now, these other programs over here, yeah, I can see we got to get rid of those. We got to lose those. We got to dump those. Those got to go. But this one over here, no, we got to keep this one. You know, it might be Head Start. They got a grandchild that... Benefits from Head Start. So, no, we got to keep Head Start. I hear you saying it's a waste of money, doesn't do any good. I don't care. My my child has benefited from it. We got to keep it. Uh, so, they want to keep that one. They're willing to get rid of farm subsidies, but you got to keep Head Start. Then you talk to a farmer, a Republican farmer, a conservative farmer, and you talk about getting rid of farm subsidies. And he says, well, now we can get rid of Head Start. Now, I, I agree with you about Head Start. That's a waste of money. That's not doing those kids any good. They don't show any benefit. They get to the third grade and all the academic benefits completely washed out. We spent billions and billions of dollars. We haven't accomplished anything. Let's get rid of Head Start. But we can't get rid of sugar subsidies. We got to keep sugar subsidies. Or we gotta, we got to keep corn subsidies. We got to keep this subsidy over here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's just that's just socialism. And so Bill Maher is exactly right. You've got some of the same people that as long as their ox is not being gored, they're perfectly happy to be economic conservatives. But once you start touching a program that they personally care about, then all of a sudden they're going to defend that program to the hilt. And I'm just bringing that up to say, look, I, I, I understand where these people are coming from. I'm not being critical of them. I understand where they're coming from. My point is we have got a really, really steep hill to climb because even people who agree with us philosophically, when it gets down to something where they've got some kind of personal interest or personal investment, they will fight tooth and nail to protect that particular government program that particular government program they'll say is good we got to keep that one the rest of them can go but that one we got to keep so everybody you talk to is going to have their pet government program that they believe we have to hang on to and we have to uh, keep all right well let's go to the phones 888-589-8840 number to call 888-589-8840 let's start with john in lottie florida john welcome to focal point what's on your mind Grace and peace, Brian. Grace and peace to you, was, my friend. I was just thinking about the uh, abomination that makes it desolate. That you you told me that it's going to be a false prophet. And um, back in Deuteronomy twenty third chapter, it talks about procreating false prophets. It says that they are not to be priests. So they, when they have, 
when they become priests, then they're false prophets. Now, I'm, I'm, you, you kind of lost me there. Go over that again for me. Um, in Deuteronomy 23rd chapter, I got a, a Nelson's Bible. Yeah, and, and so tell me who you're talking about, who, who who is being talked about in Deuteronomy 23. Uh, false prophets. Okay. So keep going. So we're talking about false, false prophets creating, here. That, that's where the false prophets come from. It says that they're not, they shall not serve as priests in my Nelson Bible. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and then when they become priests, then they're false prophets. And you can tell, you can tell a, um, a false uh, BTD is what the, what it starts off as. I abbreviated that word in there that uh, I don't want to say on the, on the, over the air, but um, they they got a spiral in their hair, and it's off to one side if if they're if they're a BTD, mm-hmm. or they have a chance of being a false prophet. Okay, well, uh, uh, let's cr- try to get down to what what we you'd see the takeaway. I'm not sure I'm following everything you're saying, John, but what would be the takeaway? or the application of all that for today. That's where the abomination of desolation comes from. It's when people get married and uh, they ha- a woman has a baby from one man and she goes to another man and has a baby. That's a BTD or what you told me in, um, Reb- uh, in uh, Matthew 5. Oh, so you're talking 32. about children that are born out of wedlock, in other words. Uh, not necessarily. Okay. It's a law of nature. If you want to keep a blood a bloodline, a good bloodline, you always keep with the same male and female. If you you cross up the male and female, now the bloodline goes right downhill. You, you got sorry offspring. All right. And people are the same way. Any time you have a woman has a baby, from, it ain't got nothing to do with marriage. It has a has a a baby from one man. So she's and having she uh, she's it, having children another. she's having children by different fathers is what you're talking about right right okay right uh, and that's a BTD uh, word I can't say all right okay John well listen I'm not sure I followed everything you had to say there uh, but I appreciate your call thank you for that let's go to Ben in Charlotte North Carolina Ben welcome what's on your mind hey Mr Fish how you doing good how are you good good okay Mr Fisher um, I got some I want to say that's very important to the radio station. All right. You know, I, I, I love this station. I love to listen to what y'all, you know, because y'all have it. I like listening to truth. I like people to, 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 I like listening to people when they got things accurate, when they got things right. When it comes to the scriptures, and a lot of things y'all say is incorrect. Incorrect. I'm telling you right now, because when the lady was talking about the, blue, the red moons, uh-huh. terminology is very important when it comes to the word of God, because the spirit is in the words. What she was saying is on the Jewish feast days or the Lord feast days. The word Jewish is incorrect. There's no such thing as Jewish. That's man-made. They were Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite feast days. Yeah. Okay? They were not Jews. They were not Israelis. They were not Jewish. This is incorrect terminology that's been used. It is really deception. Well, Ben, you know? most, but I think most people, and I think this is what Jan was using it, certainly the way I would use it, is that Jewish and, and Hebrew, we're using those terms interchangeably. What, what's the harm in using them as synonyms of each other? Because the ancient Israelites were a different people. If you do your study, if you really do research, the ancient Israelites were a different kind of people, a different group of people than the Jewish people are today. If you do your research, you'll find out what I'm saying is true. Just like Rosh Hashanah. That's not that's not verified in the script. It's memorial blowing of the trumpet. They change it, substitute memorial blowing of the trumpets to Rosh Hashanah, because they don't want to recognize blowing of the trumpets. Because blowing of the trumpets is the ten days that you have to get the house in order before Yom Kippur. So yeah. to skip the judgment, they replaced it with Rosh Hashanah to keep from being judged by not just any god, but Yah. You know, they they misuse the terms when you talk about the word of God. You can't. You got to get the terminology right because the well, I, again, Ben, I'm, uh, l- let me try to get. I need to take another call before we're, before we're done here, but I'm trying to kind of boil down to what you see as the takeaway. What what what's the importance of that for today? The importance of that is we in the last days, and the most important thing that we can do when it comes to the Word of God, we must speak the truth. We can't substitute words. We have to speak in the right spirit, the right terminology, because it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh prop is nothing. So you can't substitute man-made words to activate the Holy Spirit. 
Mm-hmm. That's the wisdom. That's what. See, these are keys. These are uh, these are keys that people must know and be aware of in order to reach God. This All right. is deception that's taught in religion today. Okay, that's Ben. The, well, listen, I um, I'm not sure I followed everything you said there, and I don't know how much of it I agree with, but I. Obviously, it's something that you feel passionate about, and I appreciate your call. Thank you for listening to us, and thank you for calling in and sharing your perspective. I appreciate that. Let's go to David, Mobile, Alabama, uh, last call of the hour. David, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hey, yes. Uh, my question is really very simple. You've probably answered it a dozen times. Uh, why is Social Security considered an entitlement since I paid into it all of my life? and am only receiving part of what I paid in. Yeah. Well, it, you know, the reality is it's it's not an entitlement, David. This is the odd thing that people don't understand about Social Security is, you know, it was kind of presented as like insurance or pension. You pay in the ideas that your money, your donations, your contributions are kept in some kind of lockbox with your name on it, and then you get it back with interest when you retire. Well, the way it was set up, Congress can change the rules on payouts anytime they want. There's no entitlement whatsoever. Nobody is entitled to any Social Security benefit. They could come in tomorrow and they could wipe out the whole program and they would be legally entitled to do it. And what you're talking about, David, because it's just basically a big giant Ponzi scheme, people are getting far less back, maybe 2% return on investment today. In about 25 years, they're going to get back about 76 cents for every dollar they put in. Actually, people are going to start losing money on Social Security. Could have done far better if that money had been invested in private investment stocks, would have returned 6 8%, way better off. But, David, you got the same problem we all do. That's a Ponzi scheme, and eventually it blows up on everybody. Focal Point AFR Talk. We'll be back after the news. Stay with us.